I was in Kabul for summer break. My flight was cancelled. I lost my hope and I was worried that I would never get an opportunity to be evacuated from Afghanistan. I thought I had to abandon my dream of getting an education, having my human rights and living in peace and freedom. I am worried about thousands of other girls who haven't had the chance to leave the country and are forced to give up on their dreams. There are girls in Afghanistan with high goals, mindsets and aspirations and with incredible intelligence but they have to bury their dreams because they are banned from getting an education. I feel awfully sorry for them because all their dreams and aspirations have been shattered and their future and lives in general are now at risk. Currently in Afghanistan, we have um, a big problem, which is humanitarian crisis. Um, children are starving to death and uh, more it's estimated that more than um half of the population which is uh of the 39 million people who who live in afghanistan they do not ha have enough to eat and um the future of afghan women and girls is a big question mark so it is very it's unknown it is uncertain like i would say that women and girls they have a fear all secondary schools for girls uh, they remain closed um since the taliban took over uh, Afghanistan on August 15th, uh, 2021. And right now, Afghanistan is one of, is the only uh, country in the whole world where girls are not allowed to go to school. We're like, our problems are the basic needs that we have. We don't have the right to work. Like these things are very, you don't even think about that like in other countries, right? It's very automatic. If Afghan women are given opportunities, um, uh, they excel in everything that they do. Afghan women and girls have learned resilience for the past 50 years, and they have learned how to deal with the problems, and they became the change makers in their families, in their communities, and in the nation, especially um, young Afghan girls, because they have been brought up in war, they have been brought up in the in this situation, is in this uncertainty, and they learn how to deal with it. Um, and um, I think the world just cannot sit back and watch. Um, the world has to do something to solve this ongoing humanitarian crisis in Afghanistan. I was going to return to Bishkek, Kyrgyzstan on August 16th to continue my education at the American University of Central Asia. But the Taliban took over Afghanistan on August 15th. The government collapsed a human disaster was going on in Kabul airport, and my flight got cancelled. The US, NATO, and its allies withdrew from Afghanistan by August 31st, but we could not get out of Kabul by that time. I accepted that I might never get a chance to be evacuated from Afghanistan. It was horrible. We feared for our lives. I didn't leave the house for weeks. I was imprisoned at home and felt hostage in my own country. I and other students contacted AUC administration and the Open Society University Network. Our university, despite all their efforts, couldn't include us in the list of evacuees until the end of August. We waited every day, hoping to be on one of those rescue flights before something bad happened to one of us. On August 27th, we received an email of a possible evacuation flight, which was later cancelled. The next day, on August 28th, we received another email, but the Taliban were not allowing us to pass the gates. On August 29th, we received another call to go to the previous location at 7.30. This time, they said that the evacuation flights are over. We lost all our hopes. The Taliban were announcing in their conferences that they will not allow anyone with a higher education to leave the country. Another evacuation plan was arranged 10 days later. We had to cross the border and reach Pakistan by land. We had to gather and leave at 2 a.m. The Taliban had many checkpoints on the way. If we were to be recognized, 
God knows what would have happened to us. Finally, after almost 12 hours of road trip, we reached Pakistan. And finally, we were able to travel to Kyrgyzstan and pursue our education. I was born in Herat, Afghanistan, under the Taliban's regime. So, I know how it must feel when a child loses his, her childhood. When a child is scared of having a dream because of the fear of being punished by the Taliban. My main concern is people left in Afghanistan. Half of population in Afghanistan are deprived of living, of appearing on, on a stage, of appearing and working side by side as men. We're witnessing today is child marriage increasing. Taliban soldiers taking little girls as sex slaves. Taliban giving guns to the children to terrorize each other. How is this going to help any of us? We see that women who invested their lives to become journalists, to become teachers, to become actors and translators, to their, their order to be at home. Those are the people, those are the individuals that we needed to build Afghanistan. Because you cannot build Afghanistan just based on religious beliefs. And what is heartbreaking is to see other countries not even speaking about this anymore. As if nothing has happened, as if nothing is happening in Afghanistan, as if women are not deprived of having uh, access to education, of being allowed to go to work. I just hope that international communities can pay attention to those who left in Afghanistan. Afghanistan is known as the worst country for women in the world. Now a whole population is deprived of education and are living a poor life. The irreparable damages that the Taliban has inflicted over Afghanistan will take centuries to recover. I want to be hopeful, but it is hard at this point in time. Taliban, through their mismanagement, have caused the economic and social collapse of the country. I got an opportunity to continue my education with international standards. Here I survive. I will enrich my knowledge and skills. I will work for Afghan women and I will be their voice 